Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So authorities have officially opened an investigation into yet another potential fake candidate in Florida. But before I get to that major development in this very convoluted case, I wanted to share a few other quick updates with you. So first, I have an update about the case against Alex Rodriguez. That was the original case and that's still ongoing. That's the candidate who was arrested and admitted to being paid to run in the race to basically just siphon votes away from the Democrat. And this was in the 37th district in Florida. Well, Rodriguez will no longer be a co-defendant along with Frank Artiles because he has agreed to a plea deal. Um, as of today, as per the requirements of that plea agreement, he will testify against his friend and former state senator, Frank Artiles. That's the man who allegedly paid him to run in that race. The next update has to do with one of the other seemingly two fake candidates. It was a man or is a man named Celso Alfonso. So Alfonso, you may recall, he's 81 years old. He His profile was identical to Rodriguez. He did no campaigning, didn't talk with the press. He had identical mailers that were sent out on his behalf that were also funded by the same dark money group that funded the mailers for Rodriguez, as well as the next person I'm going to talk about, um, Justine Iannotti. And Artiles flew down and filed the paperwork for Alfonso for his campaign, along with Rodriguez's paperwork. So he filed the, the paperwork for both of them at the same time. Well, it appears, at least for now, based on what's being reported, that Alfonso wasn't necessarily trying to deceive the public, that he wasn't really trying to act as a spoiler candidate, as Rodriguez was. Because in a recently released sworn deposition, Alfonso's wife told investigators that basically her husband always wanted to do this. And he met and became friendly with Artiles at a day spa that the couple owns. So I, you may recall that I had shared with you pre previously news reports said that they met at a barber shop. So it, it, that apparently was incorrect. Um, according to Alfonso's wife, her husband wanted to run for public office for a long time. And Artiles apparently just encouraged him to do so. And then he helped both of them with the paperwork and the details, you know, anything that they didn't understand. She said she would reach out to him and he would explain it to them. But she claims that Alfonso was not part of this whole scheme and that he was not paid to run in the race. Um, she also told investigators that Al Alfonso changed his party affiliation from Republican to no party preference because he didn't want to be forced to run in a primary race against another Republican, I guess. So that differs from Rodriguez because with Rodriguez, uh, he changed his party affiliation purposely so that he could run as an independent or no party preference, and then he could try to appeal to left-leaning Democrats. So it does appear to differ in that way. It also appears that unlike Rodriguez, Alfonso used his own money to open his campaign account. Um, because you may remember that Rodriguez was given $2,000 to open his account by Artiles. Um, Alfonso's wife, though, said that, no, this was our money. We took it out of our account, and apparently it has been traced back to their account. But she did admit to investigators that her husband and Artilas did have conversations that she wasn't involved in. So it's possible that we'll find out something down the road. But for right now, what's been publicly released, it suggests that Alfonso did not have ill intentions. He was not trying to swing the election for the Republican. He didn't think he was going to win. But according to her, he wanted to see his name on the ballot and he was hoping to just get some votes. And that was it. So the next update I have is in regard to the political committees, which were created to raise money that was then used to promote these three seemingly fake candidates in Florida, or these candidates in question, I should say. 
As I previously mentioned, there were two young women who were asked to basically in name only act as the chair for two separate political committees that are tied to this case. One of the women was a 23-year-old named Sierra Marie Olive, or Olive, I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name, but Republican political operative Alex Alvarado called her and offered her $2,000 to essentially do nothing other than put her name on the paperwork of a political committee called Our Florida. You may remember there was another woman who was asked to do the same for a different political committee. Well, as I shared before, um, Olive or Aliv, um, like the other woman, was asked by Alvarado to send him a copy of her signature on a blank white piece of paper. Should have tipped her off, but apparently it did not. So she did that. She sent him her signature. And now she has come to realize through the investigators that her signature ended up on banking documents as well as a form that was submitted to the IRS, documents which she says she did not sign and she wouldn't have wanted to sign. In an interview with prosecutors, Olive or Olive, uh, Olive, I don't know, but again, <laughs> I'm just going to call her Olive. She expressed remorse for trusting Alvarado. Apparently, she met him through her college roommate, who is now his um, fiance. And she told prosecutors that when the media started picking up on this fake candidate story, mostly with Rodriguez, um, Alvarado sent her a text telling her that if she got a call regarding the political committee, she should keep her mouth shut. I mean, that's not suspicious, right? <laughs> now, according to current news reports, Alvarado has not been charged with any crime. So I have to put that out there. He has not been named as a suspect or anything like that, but his name does keep popping up. So I'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, now for the major update, I promised, this is the exciting news. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement announced on Monday that they opened an investigation into the Florida Senate race in the 9th District. That's the district in which Republican Jason Brodeur won, and a woman by the name of Justine Iannotti was listed on the ballot as a no-party preference candidate. Now, that name probably sounds familiar to you if you've been watching the show for a while. I've talked about Iannotti on previous shows because she appears to be a fake candidate. As with Celso Alfonso and Alex Rodriguez, Iannotti did zero campaigning. She refused to speak with the press. She was promoted with this identical mailers paid for by the same dark money groups. Um, she also very suspiciously picked up and moved from Florida to Sweden when news started to break about these potential ghost candidates in Florida. Again, not suspicious at all, right? And on the night of the election, Frank Artiles, so the man who paid Alex Rodriguez to run, he attended the victory party for Jason Brodeur. And Brodeur has also been linked to accused sex trafficker, Republican Matt Gates. So according to two sources who spoke with the New York Times, Gates and a lobbyist named Chris Dorworth discussed running a third party candidate to help get Brodeur elected. Now, both Gates and Dorworth deny having this conversation, but then Dorworth pointed out to the journalist that he spoke with, he said, well, even if it if we did have this conversation, it's not illegal. Even if we did it, it's not illegal. And that's the craziest part. That is the, that is the truth. He wasn't lying. It's not illegal to run a fake candidate. The only reason that Frank Artiles and Alex Rodriguez were arrested and have been charged with this is because Artiles paid Rodriguez to run. So unless they can get some of these other people on the same type of campaign finance violations, nothing's going to come of it. Unfortunately, there are no laws on the books to prevent someone from using skeezy tactics like using fake candidates to swing an election. 
So, you know, Florida Democrats have introduced legislation and they're trying to prevent this from happening in the future and trying to make it illegal or, or, you know, some have some sort of penalty for it. But, you know, unfortunately, thanks to gerrymandering and thanks to political games exactly like this, Republicans hold the majority in the state and they're not going to outlaw anything that benefits their party. You know, they're not about to give that up. They know people don't like their policies as much as they do Democratic policies. So they know they have to cheat to win. I've said it before. I'll say it a million times. That's why they're doing all this stuff with these voter restriction laws. That's why they're going along with Trump's big lie so that they can do illegal things so that they can take underhanded tactics and, and, you know, employ them against Democrats. That justifies to their base that they can do whatever they want. Because in their base's mind, well, Democrats are cheating, so I guess it's okay for Republicans to cheat. That's why they go along with it. And, you know, it's why I say, fuck Republicans. Every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Sorry, they'll never get another vote for me. And it may seem hard for people to believe, but yes, I have voted for for Republicans in the past. I have. I, you know, sorry to say I voted for George W. Bush's second term because of 9-11. I thought it was a bad idea to change out leadership at that time. But never again, never again. They've proven over the past six years They have zero morals and zero principles. So even if there's not a Democrat on the ballot that I care for, you know, even if there's someone that I don't necessarily like, I'll just sit it out. (laughs) But Republicans will never get a vote for me ever again in my entire life. So anyway, guys, I'll keep you posted on all of this. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon. Please become a friend or a supporter of the show so we can keep it going. Click on the link down below in the description box. If you become a friend of the show, you can hang out with me and Will. And by the way, Will will be back. Um, He had a birthday, so he was off on Friday, and then he came down with food poisoning. So (laughs) he is feeling better. He believes he will be back tomorrow. So thanks again for watching. Take care, and we'll talk with you soon. (laughs) 